Hello, and welcome to today's training on upcoming code changes and the electrification feasibility reporting tool brought to you by the City and County of Denver. A few quick notes for this. You can watch each of these modules individually and repeatedly. After watching all of the modules, you'll be given the opportunity to take a short quiz. If you get eight out of 10 correct and you pass today's quiz, you can be listed on the City and County of Denver's website as knowledgeable and capable of performing an electrification feasibility report. Electrification feasibility reports were created as a screening tool for cost effectiveness and will be evolving over time to reflect electrification requirements and lessons learned. Finally, existing buildings have permit process changes that happen in 2023 and 2025 as well as electrification equipment requirements in 2025 and 2027. Let's take a quick look at what you're going to hear about and learn about over the course of these modules. We've broken them up into individual modules, again, so you can watch and listen to them in any order and as often as you like. Some of the modules are very general and apply to all electrification projects, and pieces of equipment, and some are more specific. Those specific modules will focus on either HVAC or plumbing electrification. As we go through, some of the modules will cover why electrification is important, what some of these code and permit process changes are for the commercial and multifamily sector. Note, in 2023, this starts on March 1st of 2023, with permit process um, changing for replacing air conditioners, furnaces, and water heaters. The 2025 permit changes will happen in January of those years. We'll also cover the electrification feasibility report. We often refer to this simply as the EFR, so you'll see that repeatedly. And again, this is a tool to help you decide if a heat pump is right for your customer's project and as an option for complying with the new permit process. And then finally, we'll talk about the building electrification program this will include both tools and incentives to help you and your customers, the building owners. You may be asking, what is in this for me? So let's talk again real quickly about what is in this for you. Again, upon completing these modules, you have the opportunity to take a short quiz. It's a simple 10 questions. Get eight out of 10 right and you pass the quiz and your name will be added to the list. And this will be listed on, again, the City and County of Denver's website as you being knowledgeable and capable of performing an electrification feasibility report. You're also going to learn about incentives, both for completing electrification feasibility reports, as well as for equipment replacement itself. And finally, we really hope this will allow you to confidently navigate some of these permitting changes that are upcoming, and we'll make sure you have the resources to make this worthwhile for you. Let's start off by talking about why electrification and what electrification means in the context here. So here, electrification is the shift to using electricity rather than burning fossil fuels like oil and gas and coal for space and water heating. The program with the city and county of Denver allows for both full electrification, meaning a complete switch from a fossil fuel burning appliance to a complete electrical appliance, as well as dual fuel or hybrid systems, where the majority of the work is being done by heat pump technology, and then a portion during the coldest times of the year or during extreme uses require a little bit more capacity or oomph, in which case um, a natural gas, for instance, or propane backup heating system may be allowed to be used. The goal here is to get to all electrical buildings powered by solar, wind, and other sources of zero carbon electricity along the city and county's designated timeline. So why is electrification being directed at the building sector? Well, buildings and homes are responsible for 64% approximately of Denver's greenhouse gas emissions. And these may have far ranging environmental and health impacts to the citizens of the city and county of Denver. As you can see on the screen here, of that 64%, approximately 49% of those greenhouse gas emissions come from the commercial and multifamily sector, 
So this is where the focus will begin. Over time, this may expand to other sectors, but this is what our focus is on today. And that's what this program is primarily designed to address at this moment. As mentioned earlier, electrification is a component to meet the city and county of Denver's goals. And those goals surround Denver having committed to eliminating greenhouse gas emissions by 2040. All existing buildings and homes need to be net zero energy by 2040. What this means here is net zero are highly efficient, all electric, grid flexible, and powered by 100% renewable electricity again by 2040. Considering the life of an appliance that gets installed, typically somewhere between 12 and 20 years, this next round of equipment replacement may be our last chance to make a really great stride before that 2040 mark. So perhaps at this time, it makes the most sense to go to a dual fuel or hybrid system so that by 2040, it eases us into an all electrical solution for the homes and buildings that we're talking about today. Again, net zero buildings and homes reduce greenhouse gas emissions through energy efficiency by adding renewables such as solar power and by utilizing efficient electric heating and water heating equipment. The Colorado legislature through Senate Bill 19-236 has required electric utilities to decarbonize the electric grid by 80% by 2030. But Excel Energy has voluntarily exceeded that target and filed a plan that achieves roughly 85% emission reductions by 2030. Denver's electrical system is already built to withstand higher conditioning load during the summer. Therefore, winter heating needs can shift to renewable electricity without significant infrastructure build out. Excel is aware of Denver's building electrification program requirements and is planning to work on upgrading their systems as a result. Denver continues to work with Excel and the Public Utilities Commission to ensure that the grid is being upgraded, taking into consideration Denver's electrification goals. As just mentioned, one of the big ways that we achieve this is again by moving to electrically heated um, space and water heating, um, particularly when the sources of that electricity are considered green sources, such as renewables. And as we think about this, this is not new news that electric rates have gone up a bit, but there's been larger jumps, sometimes as much as 75% recently in fossil fuel rates. So considering this, Heat pumps really are our potential solution. Heat pumps work by moving heat instead of creating it. And they achieve an equivalent 200 to 300% efficiency when compared to electric resistance heat or to a fossil fuel burning appliance like a gas water heater or a gas furnace or rooftop unit. While natural gas is still currently less expensive than electricity, more efficient heat pumps using two to three times less energy than gas heating systems can make this very close in terms of operational costs. On top of this, cold climate heat pumps are now in existence and are capable of performing below zero degrees Fahrenheit and achieving a large percentage of their capacity or oomph down at the five degree range. This is plenty of enough power to heat and cool or deliver water heating in Denver. So as we think about this, um, we do understand that on especially cold days or especially high use patterns, um, these systems should achieve relative cost parity on usage, particularly in the meantime when we consider dual fuel and hybrid systems, but in many cases with all electric cold climate rated heat pumps.